Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Brittany Rossi. I am a business coach and brand strategist, and today we are starting a series about personal branding, what it is and why it's important. So let's get right to it. If you are an author, a coach, um, if you are a wedding photographer, if you're anybody that's in business and you are kind of the face of the business, then you need to be thinking about having a personal brand. And what I mean by that is um, maybe you're th trying to figure out like, well, isn't that just like my style? Isn't that just like my personality? And yes, those are definitely factors when it comes to a recognizable personal brand, but it is much more than that. And it's really not much different than a business brand. Instead of um, branding your small business, you're really taking the time to also brand you. And so it's really about um, not just marketing the product that you sell. Maybe you have a course, maybe you have a service. It's branding the experience that somebody gets as a result of working with you to receive that service or product. So ultimately, it is about being very intentional about building people's perception of you, your reputation, right? And the reality is if you don't define yourself, others will, and it may not be something that you really were going for. So the practice of individuals marketing themselves or their careers as brands can sometimes feel like kind of icky, maybe an exercise in vanity. And so I want to reassure you that that is not the case, or at least it doesn't have to be. There may be some people that you're aware of and you're just kind of like, yeah, they're just, you know, selfie queens or, you know, they're just all about themselves. It's a very selfish thing. It's a very egocentric thing and kind of a gross thing, but really it is not an exercise in vanity. It is something much more important than that. And so it's not about just self-promotion though. Some people may just do that because they, they don't know really what more a personal brand can be and do for them. Um, and it's not about being everywhere on all the platforms and highly visible all the time without a purpose. It is really about taking the time to define who you are, how you serve your people, and the kind of person that you want to be. And when you take the time to really well define your personal brand, it will do a whole load of things for you. So the first thing it really does is it identifies how to showcase your best self. And this is a really important distinction because there, there are people out there that structure this persona and it is not them. It is something that they want to be, but they're not. And it ends up becoming unsustainable. They end up burning out or they end up feeling like a fraud, right? And if that, if you've been kind of feeling like a fraud and you've been fighting kind of imposter syndrome, it might be because you didn't really connect the dots well on the idea of a public persona versus the idea of showcasing your best self. And what I mean by that is that we all have good days and bad days, right? Um, but there are days when I can show up as my best self and I am thriving. I am encouraging everyone around me. Things are happening. I'm feeling motivated. I'm feeling good about how I'm able to help my clients. And it's like, man, this was a great day. And I feel like everything just fell into place and I just loved it. I was just running in my strengths. And then we all have days where it's like everything goes sideways or a little bit crabby, or we don't say the right thing and it comes sideways out of our mouth. And it's like, oh my goodness, like, can I get it together? And so what we're doing is that we're not creating a persona that we're trying to be or creating something that we're not. We are actually still owning who we are, being unapologetically ourselves, but with the intention to show up as the best version of ourself. And I think when we do that, it's not really a comparison game. It is about becoming the best version of you. Like, so when you think of going to the gym, it's not ideal to look at somebody else's progress. It's really just important to focus on your own um, comparison to yourself yesterday. Like, how am I doing today compared to my, my reps yesterday? So kind of think of it in those terms instead of a, a persona that you're crafting that isn't really true to who you are. When you do this, it actually allows you to genuinely stand out from a crowd, to stand out from the competition and to stand out in a saturated marketplace. You might be feeling like, oh my goodness, the online coaching space is saturated. How do I make a dent in this noisy space, right? 
And so what you can do is take the time to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. Now this can be a subjective thing. We just kind of internally introspectively say, I'm really good at writing. I'm really, I have a really great eye for photography or art, or I'm very techie in nature and I'm the go-to person in my family for all things Wi-Fi and cell phones and computers, right? Or maybe you're that emotional shoulder that people come to. You're a great listener. You're emotionally intelligent. You're also a very stable person. Like maybe you have some intuitive people skills that others don't naturally possess, right? So you can kind of take it an imper uh, um, a subjective inventory of your personal strengths. Or what I really like to do is a personality assessment. And one that I really lean into strongly for my clients is called Strengths Finders 2.0 by Tom Rath. And what it does is it gives you words and language and kind of reasons behind why you operate the way you do it. It kind of explains why you're wired a certain way. And it also encourages you to lean into those things and to outsource your weaknesses. So when we are operating in our strengths, it's a very attractive thing to people, which is going to serve us later on as we continue going down this list of the benefits of a well-defined personal brand. Once you start to identify your strengths and your weaknesses and you get clarity around your values and what you're good at, um, you can really start to say, this is me. And what's also a side benefit of that is like, no one can imitate that. If they try to, it's just a very icky thing. It comes across as disingenuous. So the only person who can be you is you. So getting deep clarity about who you are is going to do wonders for you. It's going to set you apart, but it's also going to start to attract and repel the wrong people and attract the right people. And when that starts to happen, Naturally, we call it building a tribe in the online space or finding your people or building community. So once you start to do that, you're really just finding people who share similar values to you. Um, maybe it's art, maybe it's music, maybe it's a, a, a way of writing or a book style or you know a certain genre of TV shows, right? You find people who like the same things that you like and dislike the same things that you dislike. And you can't be everybody's cup of tea. And I found that there was great freedom in that idea that, you know what, some people drink coffee and some people drink green tea and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make them better or lesser people. It's just different and that's okay. You don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. There are plenty of people out there that you can serve and still make amazing money online with your business and not try to serve everybody. And when you can do that, it allows you to come across as more human, more genuine, more authentic. And really you start to have these very meaningful resonating experiences with people. And really once you find that chord of resonance with somebody, you're like, Hey, me too. I love that thing. Or, Oh my gosh, I totally know what you're talking about. I experienced that the other day, right? That's called resonance. And when we find that with our people, it starts to allow us to engage. It helps us to get to know them, what their needs are, what their pain points are. And that is essential for serving your audience and for getting, um, you know, what I call establishing credibility. It's also called your know, like, and trust factor. And when you can start to establish that and you start to cultivate that, it becomes very important for when someone starts to consider hiring you. If they don't know who you are, they've never seen you before, if they don't really like your personality and if they don't trust you to be able to deliver on something, they're not gonna pay you for your services, right? They're not even gonna accept your free stuff that you're putting out there. So taking the time to get clarity on who you are, your values, your strengths, starting to engage with other people on those topics, that will start to build your credibility, your know, like, and trust factor. And that's really important because at the end of the day, your brand, your personal brand is not about you. It's about other people. And it's about figuring out what are the signals that I'm putting out into the world that is gonna have somebody perk up and say, hey, I think I might connect with that person. I think they might understand me, right? It's about connection and being intentional about what signals we're putting out. And as you do that, you start to demonstrate the value that you're bringing to the table and to that relationship, right? So that ends up becoming much more visible once you've started working with people and you have a portfolio. Maybe it's photo images of a wedding or maybe it's design um, projects that you've done for websites or um, logos or things like that, right? Or maybe it's testimonials, maybe it's the amount of social engagement you get 
And at the end of the day, it's not about likes and comments, but those likes and comments represent resonance. It represents that somebody is connecting with what I'm saying and it matters, right? I'm making an impact. It starts to show up in our copy in the type of content that we produce and create. So once we start to do that and people start responding to it and they start to say, this was a great experience, your personal brand starts to really feel like a tangible thing that people can recognize at a glance on social media or in your pictures or when they listen to you or in your podcast. And it starts to be elevated in the social proof. So it comes through in the testimonials, it comes through in your search engine optimization. Because you've taken the time to define a number of things, people can start to look for you for those things and it starts to show up in your testimonials and your search engine optimization. And at times it's really important to kind of take a pause, take a breath, lean back and say, am I still aligned with my values? Is my message still on point? Because a, a well-defined personal brand can really start to develop your leadership style. And if you are in a learning curve for something, maybe it's a new platform, maybe you're trying to figure out a new method to scale your business, it's very easy to kind of shift and drift away from your original values and your original message in order to try to get to that next level. And so taking time to realign yourself and make sure that you are still running towards the things that you want to be known for both in and outside of your workspace and your even your headspace, right? Um, it's really important that you consistently convey the same messages and the same values. And that's going to continue to help build trust with people who are watching you, who are lurkers, who haven't yet really been ready to click that follow, subscribe, or like button. And at the end of the day, taking the time to do a, a well-defined personal brand Again, it is not an exercise in vanity. It is an exercise in building confidence. It is an exercise in building courage in building credibility or trust with people that you want to serve and that you want to have an impact on. And so when you start to define your priorities and your values, you really start to be intentional about what you're putting out into the world so that others can represent your brand for you. And I believe it was Jeff Bezos who said, you know, a brand is what, how somebody describes you when you're not in the room. And unless we're really intentional about that, they might be saying things about us that we don't want them to say, and that is not ideal. And so we need to take uh, both hands and get them around this idea of our personal brand and start to form it intentionally. So that is what a personal brand is. That is why it is so important and why I'm so passionate about it. If you found this content helpful, I hope that you will join us for the next video in the personal branding series. And if you want to go deeper into this topic, I will be linking some workbooks below that are totally free. You can check them out, work through them, and kind of work through some of the important pieces like your strengths or figuring out what you're good at, um, defining what is your best self look like. Um, so you can start at the very foundational level and start driving towards building a very intentional personal brand. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe and be sure to share it if you thought it was good. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.